الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا على الصلاة حيا على الصلاة حيا على الفلاح حيا على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شر أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فهو المحتد ومن يذلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Praise be to Allah we praise him and we seek his help and his forgiveness. Anyone who's been guided by Allah, he's indeed guided. And anyone who's been misguided, there is no one to guide him. I bear witness there's only one true God and that Muhammad is his slave and his servant. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanat taqullaha wa kawlu kawlan sadeeda yusla lakum amalakum wa yaqfir lakum dunubakum O you who believe, keep your duty to Allah and fear Him and always speak the truth. He shall rectify your conduct for you and He shall forgive you your sins. Whoever obeys Allah and His Apostle has certainly achieved a great success. Amma Baad, Fa'inna Khairul Hadith Kitabullah. وخير الحدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر الأمر محتاطها وكل بدات دلالة وكل دلالة في النار. Thereafter, indeed, the best speech is the speech of Allah, and the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. And the worst of matters are those innovated by the people, and every innovated matter is a bidah, and every bidah is astray. And every going astray is in the fire. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alam nashra laka sadrak. Wa wadana anka vizrak. Alladhi anka da zahrak. Wa rafa'ana laka zikrak. Fa innama al-usri yusra. Innama al-usri yusra. Fa iza faraqta fansab. Wa ila rabbika fargab. The rough translation of this 94th surah in the Quran Have we not expanded your breast for you and relieved you from the burden which weighed down your back and exalted your fame? Surely with every difficulty there is relief. Surely with every difficulty there is relief. Therefore when you are free from your daily task Devote your time to the labor of worship and turn all your attention to your Rabb. 
This is the 94th surah and the 93rd surah is Ad-Duha. Ad-Duha 93 and this one is the 94th surah. They came at a time when the Rasul Sallallahu was experiencing something new. Right after the revelation, the Rasul Sallallahu had a lot of constriction in his heart. He had a difficult time. And so this surah came down to assure the Rasul Sallallahu so why was he having a good time? Why was he having such a hard time? Because before the revelation came to him, the Rasul Sallallahu had great prestige. People loved him and honored him and respected him. But as soon as he started talking about Islam, about Tawheed, the same people started cursing him starting being mean to him, started to show disrespect to him. When the first revelation came, his wife took him to Waraka ibn Nafal, who was a Christian, and, and when he said, I wish I, w I was young and strong because you will be tormented by your own people. They will go against the, their own tradition. And the Rasul Sallallahu was surprised that people would be mean to him, that people would disrespect him. He was not expecting that. And so, when he started talking, no one in Makkah wanted to listen to him. No one believed him. The amazing part was, he was known as Al-Amin, the trustworthy. People trusted him. They knew he was honest and decent. But as soon as he started talking about Islam, the same people did not believe him. And that's why Allah revealed the surah. He said, we have favored you, O Prophet, with three great blessings. Therefore, do not be disheartened. Now, in the tribal society, the Quraysh were the leaders. And among the Quraysh, the Banu Hashim was even higher. The Banu Hashim they provided water to the pilgrims in Makkah. They were the custodians of Makkah. And the tribal membership was based on blood. Once you were born into a tribe, your membership was till you die. You were in the privileged status of the Quraysh till you died. And Abdul Muttalib, he was an Arab hero. He was the spirit of Arabia. It was his dua that saved Makkah from the elephants. Alam tara kaifa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al fil alam yaj al kaidahum fi tadlil. The translation is Have you not considered how your Lord dealt with the companions of the elephant? Did he not make the treacherous plan of flop? This is from the dua of Abdul Muttalib to save Makkah. It was the same Abdul Muttalib who found, rediscovered the Zamzam water. He was a legend in Arabia and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was his grandson. And yet, with such high lineage, people were opposing him, were going against their own traditions of protecting one of the tribe. They were attacking him, they were slandering him, they were marginalizing him. And for that time, it was very revolutionary that somebody from your own tribe of such high status that you would want to marginalize. This was very revolutionary in that time. If you look at the parallel of that today, right here in this country, we have a long tradition. But in 2006, in September, a law was passed. It went to the both houses of Congress and the president signed it into law. The law was that the president had the right to declare somebody a citizen or a non-citizen as an enemy combatant. And his right of due process could be taken away. He could be held indefinitely without a trial and in some cases extrajudicial killing 
And if you look at this tradition, our nation, this country that we love, it has a long tradition of freedom of worship, freedom of the speech. All the freedoms of the world are here. We have a bill of rights that many countries in the world, their citizens wish they had a bill of rights that we have. And for those of you who are old enough, there was a, in the 70s and 80s, they would call the Western world the first world and the developing world the third world. We were the first world and the first world, the rule of law was everything. That even the president was not above the law. The rule of law applied to everybody equally. If you looked at Europe, for hundreds and hundreds of years, there was religious fighting among Catholics and Protestants, among different Protestants groups. And finally, some 800 years ago, the Christians of Europe got together and said, we need to put a stop to that. And they came up with a charter called the Magna Carta. And the Magna Carta, some scholars say, came from when the Crusaders came back from Jerusalem, they told that the Khalif of Islam, there's a law above the Khalif of Islam. The Khalif of Islam has to follow the law. So some say the Magna Carta was influenced by the Crusades. And so, for the first time in Europe, the king, the leader, had to follow the law. So this is a long tradition. And right here in the United States, we have a constitution that protects a lot of these rights. Yet, to go against this long tradition of freedom, they pass a law calls, that, is, that the president call, calls somebody an enemy combatant and without any due process. The Magna Carta had come up with habeas corpus. And if there are any lawyers here, you know what I'm talking about. Habeas corpus is that you have a right for due process, that you're innocent until proven guilty. And this one law took that habeas corpus away if the president deemed somebody an enemy combatant. So you would go, why would you go against a tradition that has served the Western world for over 800 years? And right here in the United States for over 300 years. It is because of the other. It's a fear. It's a phobia. The other is Islam. It's Islamophobia. So, a free process in this country, because of Islamophobia, they pass a law that somebody can be called an enemy combatant and his due process is gone. It's amazing. See, a phobia is like a stigma. It's an irrational fear. A fear that is not logical, without sane reason. This is what a phobia is. And so pho Islamophobia is causing a lot of these changes in Western tradition of tolerance, of acceptance that we all came to this country for. Now, if you look at talk radio, I call it hate radio. There's constant marginalization of Muslims. And on TV, the talking heads keep saying it over and over again. 17 states in the United States have passed laws against Sharia. And our own legislature about three weeks ago reintroduced for the fourth time an anti-Sharia law. It's just going to go through the process now. So this is coming from Islamophobia that all these changes are happening. But Monday, just a few days ago, five days ago, in Deland, there was a hearing at the school board. The hearing was that a group of people wanted to remove Islam from the world history book or change it or completely remove it. They thought it made Islam look normal. They wanted it to be vilified in the textbook. So for four hours, there was a hearing and many, many non-Muslims came out in support of the textbook. A lot of young Muslims came too. It was a petition signed by local high school kids in Deland. 500 of them signed a petition to keep the book there. And after four hours, the school board decided that they were not going to make any changes. 
You see, so I'm very proud of the people of Central Florida who stood up for what is right. Of all the Muslims who went there to show support, who did dua. See, it's these small battles that we need to win. Small battles. And one young man, a non-Muslim, a high school kid, he stood up and he said, we are young people, we don't think like these old people. We want the Muslims to be included in our society. We reject this idea of excluding Muslims from society. He's a young man, he's a non-Muslim. And he said that. So we have a lot of work to do. There are a lot of good people in this community that we need to reach out to become friends with and connect with them. Another important note, the original leader of this protest movement, he met with CARE Florida. And after he met with CARE Florida, he changed his mind. He resigned from his position and he apologized. This was the original leader of this group. And then he said something very noteworthy. He said many Islamophobes had contacted him to join forces with him. So there is an undercurrent in America of a small group of people who are highly organized, well-funded, media savvy. They make a lot of noise to put fear in the hearts of good, decent Americans about what Islam is. And they get to define what Islam is because we don't have as loud a voice. We are not as organized. We are not as well-funded. We are not as media savvy as they are. Their numbers may be few, but they're very effective. We have to be honest. They're very effective in spreading Islamophobia in this country. They're very, very effective. Now, in 1909, the NAACP was started. And in 1913, the Anti-Defamation League was started. The Anti-Defamation League is one that supports Jewish rights. These two groups were very highly marginalized in the United States. And so they formed organizations to fight this discrimination. And it took decades and decades of hard work. But if you read their history, it was not three activists in one city and four activists in the other city. It was a grassroots event. People at the grassroots said, enough is enough. We are not going to put up with this. We are not going to put up with this marginalization. We are going to do something about it. And that's how they got the attention of the lawmakers and of society in general. These two organizations were vilified when they first started. But now if you go on their website, there's a list of corporate sponsorships of these. I went to the NAACP website this morning, SubhanAllah, there's 42 corporations and one of them I work for is a co-sponsor of the NAACP. So they got, the discrimination is not 100% gone, but it's greatly reduced. So we have work to do. We can learn from organizations and we can learn from communities who face these challenges that we are facing. Now I went to the FBI website this morning in 2010 and 2011, hate crimes against Muslims was 12.5%. Our population is less than 3%. Hate crime is 12.5%. In 2010 and 2011, they don't have 2012 numbers yet. And if you look at the, after 9-11, it went up and then went down in the late 2000s and now started to come back up again. So because the Islamophobes, they keep this thing in the media to keep us off balance. And so we have, to, we have work to do. And we have to work to do at the grassroots level. We cannot just say we have, well, we have three activists, mashallah, they'll take care of it. That's not how it works. All of us have to do it. Now Islamophobia started with the Rasul Sallallahu and it's been going on for over a thousand years. See? So if all this Islamophobia makes you mad, I say Alhamdulillah. Because that means you have Iman. That means you love Allah and you love His Rasul. You love the deen of Islam. Because it makes you mad, 
So I want to do something about it. I don't want to be mistreated when I go to the airport. I don't want to get mistreated when I apply for a job because my name is Muhammad or I wear a hijab. And so this is our time to do some work. And we don't want to be passive. If you want to take halal, good action, you want to correct the wrong, you do, cannot be passive. If you excel in teaching and preaching, then do so. If you excel in marketing or media, then do so. If you excel in public campaigns, then do so. If you excel in politics, do so. If you excel in communications, do dawa. Let's get organized and show our neighbors and co-workers the beauty of our religion. Why are we hiding it? There's the hadith of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a moment is an optimist. I'm an optimist. This is a great country that gives us great opportunity. But we have to stand up and demand our rights. They're not going to give it to us. We have to demand it. And it's very easy to overcome if we make it a priority. This challenge of Islamophobia is easy to overcome only if we make it a priority. Aqulli qawli hadha wa astaghfiruhu There are two cars, a BMW um, and a Nissan Murano. There's, you're blocking the parking lot. If it belongs to you, please go out there and move it. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad kama sallayta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ala Sayyidina Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. Something that I have observed, if you go to a Muslim event, there's just certain type of Muslims that go. If you go to a Sira conference, or if you go to a, a conference, the Quran, the Hadith, Tajweed, a special type of people go there. Religiously minded people go there. And then if you go to a Muslim organized political event, you see a different group of people there. And then if you go to a conference on Islamic education, you see another set of group there with very little overlap. And then if you go to a Muslim civil rights event, another set of Muslims go there with very little overlap. And this is just my observation because when I go to these conferences, especially in Central Florida, I see people, very few times do I see the repeat people who came to one conference and went to the other one. If you look at the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was worried about your civil rights, he was worried about the political rights, he was worried about the family, he was worried about the education, he was worried about our aqidah, he was worried on all aspects that affected us. So as an ummah, all these programs are important. You know, we cannot separate ourselves from the larger things that are happening in the community. You cannot only just go for something that's an immediate priority. If your children are married and gone, you should still be worried about education for our children. See? So because everything in Islam is it's interrelated. We're like married to one another. All these things are married to one another. You cannot build a masjid or a seerah conference if you don't have any civil rights in the country. And what good is civil rights if you have no religious education? If you have no political rights in this country, then they can pass laws that affect you directly in your marriage or inheritance. These things are all interconnected. Now the government in Florida wants to pass laws, anti-shari law, to talk, to please a very small number of Floridians because other states have done it, they want to do it. So I want to talk about an event that's going to take place tomorrow. 
and it's a care florida event in tampa they're going to talk about our civil rights they're going to tell us what we as muslims are facing what are the challenges and how to overcome them and this is an organization that supports all muslims everywhere about 3 weeks ago a muslim brother that is present here got a phone call or got a visit from the fbi to his home and he called care florida the attorney of care florida contacted the fbi the case was closed so if the fbi goes on a fishing expedition and calls you you have to have an organization that will back you and it's so important that we have civil rights in the country so we do not get marginalized if we have civil rights then we can concentrate on our children's education on building masajids these things are all interrelated so i want to personally invite you there are brothers who are going to be outside selling these tickets i want to personally invite you to a civil rights event because our civil rights is being eroded hasan shibli comes here a lot and inshallah next week he will also do the khutba right here at amcc he comes and supports us and we should go and support him and this is my humble request to you because malcolm x said the future belongs to those who prepare for it today the future belongs to those who prepare it today so inshallah let's be prepared about our future and i want to end my khutba about us when we do things we have to be sincere see if you are a student and you tell your teacher i was very sincere i tried to do my tests very sincerely the teacher is not going to look at your sincerity he's going to look how you wrote the test and grade you accordingly and if you are sincere at work and do not finish the budget or the program on time your employer is not going to say you were sincere so we will overlook it but allah subhanahu wa taala he looks at how sincere you are in whatever you do if you are sincere you are rewarded for your actions so i humbly tell myself that i should be sincere in everything i do and i want to send that message to you because i, I read a hadith which is in bukhari verily really allah does not look at your appearance or wealth but rather he looks at your heart and your actions see so that allah is rewarding is if you're sincere in your actions a strong spirit cannot sustain a weak body uh, i'm sorry i messed that up a strong spirit can always sustain a weak body but a weak spirit even if you have a strong body it cannot be sustained so we have to have strong spirit and that's what the spirit of islam is I want to do dua for Dr. Ali Manshawi. He is in the ICU. His condition is very uh, serious, and it took for a turn for the worse. So, inshallah, may Allah grant him uh, shifa and sabr for his family, and uh, give him quick re- recovery, inshallah. Oh Allah, do not let our hearts deviate from the truth now that we have been guided, but grant us mercy from your very presence, for you are the grantor of bounties without measure. O oh Allah help me to perfect my prayer and of my descendants O oh Allah accept this prayer O oh Allah forgive us and our parents and all believers until the day of reckoning O oh Allah increase us in knowledge O oh Allah make us more compassionate O oh Allah help us to be more tolerant and understanding O oh Allah help us to be more patient O oh Allah cure the sick O oh Allah decrease our disability O oh Allah decrease our shortcomings O oh Allah we acknowledge the blessings you have showered upon us O Allah, we seek refuge in you from our shortcomings. So forgive us, for there is none that forgives but you. Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifun. Wassalamu ala al-Mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. I have a few short announcements. I already mentioned Dr. Ali Manshawi. He is in the Florida Hospital South.